Next, we're going to look at the idea of vapor pressure. And let's first define what vapor pressure is. Vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by a vapor in equilibrium, meaning the uh, well, well, with its pure liquid or solid. At equilibrium, rates of vaporization and condensation are equal. So what's happening is this, is we have, um, um, we have a container with some liquid in it for example, or we could have a container also with some solid in it. And let's say that these things are, that there's, there's material that's in the liquid phase and then particles that are in the gas phase. Some of those liquid particles have enough energy to make it into the gas phase, and those And those particles are what would form what's called the vapor pressure. It's the pressure exerted by this gas in equilibrium with this pure liquid or solid. What they're saying here is that the, the rate of vaporization is equal to the rate of condensation. So there's, there's intrinsically some sort of a, a pressure that, or, or amount of liquid or gas at a certain temperature that is going to be present um, for each substance, whether it's a liquid or a solid. Solids could also have this happen. You could have sublimation occurring and then deposition occurring also and, and then that would be an equilibrium. So solids or liquids could both have vapor pressure. It's not so common I suppose for a lot of solids that we experience to have a vapor pressure. One, a few things to note is that vapor pressure is independent of the volume of the liquid. So it doesn't matter how much liquid you have in this container, the vapor pressure will still be the same. The other thing is that vapor pressure increases with temperature. And this makes sense because, I mean, imagine if we increase the temperature, more of these liquid molecules would have enough kinetic energy to be pushed into the gas phase. Okay, related to vapor pressure, and we're, we, uh, is is uh, the the boiling point of a liquid, and and I, we all have a very good uh, uh, um, colloquial definition or idea of what boiling looks like, especially if we boil water, say like to make pasta or something. But if we define boiling, let's define what boiling is. It's the formation. Of a vapor within, uh, uh, um, let's say, the body of a liquid that uh, that is pushed to the surface and escapes. Right, so in other words, what's what's happening is you're you're essentially forming a packet of gas almost within the liquid, because those gas molecules, those those particular molecules of that liquid, had enough energy to become a gas, and so since the gas is less dense than the liquid, it would bubble up and escape. Now, more importantly, let's talk about the boiling point, and what the boiling point is, is the temperature.
at which the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to the pressure above the, its surface. So when some at the boiling point, the temperature at which something boils, we just define what boiling is, the temperature at which something boils is is when the vapor pressure of the liquid, the pressure that's exerted by that vapor, when it's in equilibrium with its pure liquid or solid, we'll talk about as being a liquid here um, because we're talking about boiling. So temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to the pressure above its surface. So in other words, the pressure that's exerted by this gas, that's as the liquid is evaporating, is equal to the pressure that's above its surface. Oftentimes we think of the vapor pressure or the boiling point as being at, say, one atmosphere of pressure, in other words, room conditions. At that point, we would talk about it as being the normal boiling point which is at, oops, excuse me, which would be the, the boiling point at one atmosphere of pressure. And you can imagine that if we have, if we, if we have varying amounts of pressure of the gas that's above this liquid, if we raise this pressure, we could see that the boiling point would, would, would have to go would, would have to go up, right? If we were to lower that, it would have to go, if we were to lower the pressure above this liquid, the point at which the, the, um, the vapor pressure is equal to the pressure above its surface might go down the temperature at which that would happen. Now, to be able to quantify this, there is an equation that we can use to figure out what the vapor pressure is for, um, for, for different pressures or temperatures. So let's look at this. So this is the Clausius Clapeyron equation. It relates vapor pressure and liquid temperature. If we were to take, for example, a plot of the natural log of the vapor pressure and plot it against one over the temperature, what we'd end up with is a straight line. Now, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm not worried about having you know where this, uh, the derivation of this equation comes from. So don't worry about exactly where this comes from. It's just a useful equation to know, but I am going to show you, uh, um, I'll, I'll show you where it, where, it, where it comes from, but this, this relationship holds. And, and, and if we have, um, what, we, what we can do is the following. If we take, so this straight line, the slope is a measure of the amount of energy involved or needed to do that. And we can actually um, uh, we can actually um, because this is a line, what we can do is the with is with the following. We can have the natural log of the pressure is equal to um, is equal to the delta H of vaporization, right? 
over r, our gas constant, times t, plus b, some, 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 uh, um, some constant. Okay, I'm going to change this just, uh, uh, well, anyway, so we have, so we have this, so we know this, this, we can, you can see that the slope would be delta h and so on. So, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this at, let's just take this at, at, uh, two temperatures, two different temperatures. At one temperature, we'd have a vapor pressure. At another temperature, we would have a different vapor pressure. What we can do is we will next, do, our goal here is to be able to find the vapor pressure of one at, at a given temperature and va known vapor pressure. We can find, say, the vapor pressure at a different temperature. So, so to do that, and is is the following and again I don't care if you know how to derive this but I want to show you where it comes from we are going to and we will subtract off And what we end up with is the following. So we have the natural log of P2 minus the natural log of P1 equals minus delta H of vaporization over our gas constant. And just getting rid of the variables that are there, we have the following equation. This equation is really actually quite handy because of the fact we can Oh, there's another way to express this, of course, using natural logs. Oops, P1. Subtracting them, of course, gives you that. And that's equal to the same thing. Okay, this equation is called the clausius clapeyron equation. Okay. Um, just a few things to keep in mind. Delta H of vaporization is in units of joules per mole. And R is our gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. So the great thing about this, and I'm going to leave the, uh, any examples up to you, because it's really just sort of a plug and chug equation. You can find the vapor pressure of a material under a second set of conditions if you know the vapor pressure, say for example in the temperature, its boiling point, at another set of conditions. So if you wanted to know what the vapor pressure would be at a certain temperature, you would be able to find that out. So you have those, you can use those variables to solve various equations using the clausius clapeyron equation. There's one final, oh, actually I'm gonna stop there.